The UN's refugee agency is warning that Afghanistan needs urgent support from the international community to prevent a larger humanitarian crisis. The comments come as some countries suggest they will only engage with the Taliban if they agree to respect human rights, in particular those of women and girls. We'll have more from our correspondent in Kabul on developments on the ground in a moment, but first this report. The buzz of Kabul streets has slowly been returning in the past month. It appears there's peace in the Afghan capital, which some residents have welcomed. But despite the improvement in the security situation, certain sections of society fear and reject the heavily armed Taliban. There have been protests by women who are angry at their new undefined role in society. They fear misogynistic violence and their rights being curtailed. Their presence on the streets of towns and cities across Afghanistan has been significantly altered. The Taliban have said they can get an education, but men and women have already been segregated at schools and universities. In the media too, journalists have spoken of being on the receiving end of intimidation and violence for carrying out their work. Thousands of Afghans have already left their homeland in recent weeks, and it's expected many more will do so in the future. The exodus, or plans to leave, are not only driven out of fear, but also because of Afghanistan's dire economic situation. The Taliban need billions of euros in aid and investment from the international community if they're to help improve the lives of ordinary people and prevent a humanitarian catastrophe. But Afghanistan's interim government faces an uphill battle to convince skeptical governments it won't rule in the same authoritarian style it did from 1996 to 2001. With rumours of a split in leadership, it may not just be on the international stage that the Taliban faces challenges. Can it remain united and avoid further political turmoil in an already weary Afghanistan? For more on the situation in Afghanistan, let's uh, cross over to journalist Ali Latifi in Kabul. Ali, uh, there have been reports of a split in the Taliban leadership. What's your impression? The split has existed basically since 2015 when the death of Mullah Omar was announced. And if you look at what happened in the wake of that, you know, the Haqqani network was brought into the Taliban fold. They were given de high level deputy positions. Mullah Yaqub, the son of Mullah Omar, was also given a high-level position because, again, there was this um, big controversy and outcry over uh, the, the chain of command and over who would inherit the leadership of the Taliban. Um, so this has been going on for a long time now, and we're seeing that same issue rise up now, wherein you're seeing loyalists to the Afghani network, and loyalists to the Taliban leadership who were mostly in Doha, including Malal Baradad, uh, who was the head of their political office. You know, we're seeing them uh, clash with each other. And you see that in the way they conduct themselves on the street. You can tell who is allied with the Haqqanis, who is allied with, with the other Talibs. Um, and this is, this is really the issue that's been going on uh, since they came to power, because, you know, as much as they wanted to rightfully talk about all of the discord in the former government. Now they're realizing that once you get to the presidential palace, you will likely find yourself in a very similar situation. Well, the economic crisis there is worsening with banks running out of cash, food prices soaring and the authorities unable to pay salaries. Uh, how is that affecting uh, the Taliban's rule? It doesn't necessarily, well, I mean, it, it does affect the Taliban's rule because people, you know, are upset that in these, you know, last three weeks they haven't been able to gain access to money and things like that. But we have to remember that this is a result of policy by the IMF, the World Bank, the U.S. Federal Reserve. This was money that was either, that either belonged to the Afghan government or was promised to the Afghan government that they cut off as soon as the Taliban took over, even though 
all of these countries knew that the Taliban was taking over. Germany has been talking to the Taliban since 2011. Norway has been. The United States has been. The United States signed an agreement with them in 2020. The, they, all of these countries, I mean, Germany was one of the last countries to leave. They were here to see the Taliban take over of Afghanistan. And then all of a sudden when it happens, they cut off the funding. And what happens? It's not the Taliban that suffer. It's the average person. Ali Latifi there in Kabul for us. Many thanks, Ali.